This is part four on our series of thermodynamics of steam. What we have is five distinct sections of our boiling or evaporation heat addition temperature change um, diagram. When we're warming up our fluid, it's in the liquid state, but it's not at the point where it's saturated. What we consider it to be is subcooled. It's cooler than saturation, so subcooled liquid. We then get to the point of being saturated liquid. Inside, when we have our mixed phase, so two phase mixture of steam and water, um, sometimes we call this wet steam. Um, it may be called yeah, mixed phase, um, saturated, wet saturated steam. So a lot of different terms, but we'll consider that to be our wet region. Um, when we get to the end, we get to our dry saturated steam. So we get to our dry region. And then once we've passed the point where we are no longer evaporating, we can add sensible heat again, and we get into the superheated steam region. Um, so what we want to do is figure out for all of these different areas, um, where do we find properties? How do we get H? H is enthalpy, and we'll talk about why it's important. And then uh, I have this other thing here, I just said X, and we're going to talk about what that means. So let's figure out what we know at this point and fill in. So if we want to find, say, our saturated liquid, well, what we're going to do is we are going to go to our saturated tables. Oops. It's going to be in our sat tables, right? And depending on what we have, we have pressure or we have temperature. Um, and if we recall what H was, H has something specific in these tables. Um, we had an HF, we had an HG. This was for the fluid version, so F. And that would be our our uh, that would be our our H. Same thing over here. We have saturated um, either your pressure or your temperature table, depending on what you have. And our dry saturated steam enthalpy would be represented by Hg. What we're going to talk about now is what happens in this wet steam region. So what do we have? Well, we've got 100% liquid here. We've got 100% steam here. What if I was right in the middle? What do I have? Well, what I have is half liquid and half steam. What I have to be able to do is if I'm not either on the front or back edge of this, of these properties or of this heating process, um, what I have to do is define exactly where I am because I could be anywhere. And if I'm over here, I'm going to have vastly different properties than if I was over here or anywhere along this line. What we define is this value x. And what x is, is a measure of how far am I from my saturated liquid point to my saturated steam. So really, what X is telling me is the mass of steam compared to the mass total. So that's the, that's the, the, the equation that defines X. But really what it's saying is how much has turned into steam compared to what I started with. And X tends to be it's a decimal so if it's over here x would be equal to zero x over here is equal to one and anywhere in between so in the middle here if i was right in the middle x would be 0.5 
Um, X has a few other terms, so there's a few things that we would call it. Um, sometimes it's the dryness. Okay, so that's a commonly used term, dryness. Quality is another. So the quality of the steam. Um, dryness factor, dryness fraction. Um, this has a whole lot of different terms that come out, but basically what it's telling me is how dry is the steam or how close am I to 100% evaporate it. So let's try and figure out how we would actually find out an H value for somewhere inside of this region, because we could find HF here, we could find HG here, and we can find those right out of the tables. If we're somewhere in the middle, um, we're going to have to figure out how to get a property. Okay, so let's say that what I'm trying to do is solve for this. Find an H value at 2000 kPa if X is equal to 0 0.9. So I guess first thing that I want to do is I know that it's somewhere inside of this range. So between HF and HG. So I've grabbed my steam table properties for pressure 2000. And what it says is that if it was 100% saturated vapor, the enthalpy would be 908. If I add enough heat, in this case the latent heat, 1890.7, what I'd get is a final enthalpy of 2799.5, which would be my saturated vapor. Well, here's what it's telling me. X is equal to 0.9 means that my saturated vapor, um, I only have 90% of it that's saturated vapor. And the rest of it still sits as saturated liquid. So I think here's the best way maybe at this first stage to, to think about it, is that my H, oops, my H is going to be equal to my X value, and I'm going to kind of script it out so we don't confuse it as just a multiplication sign. So X times my HG. So it's telling me 90% of my fluid is steam and steam has a certain amount of enthalpy. So that accounts for the 90% that's the steam. What I haven't accounted for is the 10% that's left over that's still water. And I have to worry about that guy. So plus 1 minus my quality, so in this case would be 10% or 0.1, times HF. That's the energy that would be contained in just water. So basically I have a blended mixture of two different substances, water and steam, with different percentages that carry different weights in terms of energy. If I put out my value, H is equal to, say, so 0 0.9 times my HG, 2799.5, plus, in this case, 1 minus 0 0.9 times 90, oops, 908.79 and what I get is 2610.4 and again units of enthalpy here kilojoules per kilogram um, what I want to do is just take a reality check once I found my value. I know that it has to be inside of this range somewhere. Right? So all the way on the extreme left side would be 908. 
on the extreme right side would be $27.99. I know that I'm closer to this side because it's 90% the way across, 90% steam. If I look at my value, 2610.4, first of all, it is in between these two numbers, so it's within that those gap. Okay. And then it's much closer to the saturated side. So I'm feeling pretty confident that what I've got is the right value. So now that we've talked about x a bit, let's fill in some more of our chart. x is equal to 0 in saturated liquid. x for wet steam is anywhere slightly above 0. So x is greater than 0, but x is going to be less than 1. Okay, so that, what that's saying is it's in between 0 and 1, but not on 0 and 1. And then over here, x is equal to 1. We had an equation for h. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit it in here. h is going to be equal to um, x. Uh, x times h g plus 1 minus x times h f. And we saw as well, so within our wet steam, that would be saturated pressure and temperature tables as well. So depending on what we had in terms of pressure or temperature. So to finish off the different categories here, first of all, if I'm outside of saturation, X doesn't really apply. Um, it's only a term that's used if I'm talking about the saturated regions. If I'm in the superheated region, well, I have superheated tables, so that's, that's pretty easy. Um, we don't really talk about the superheated tables yet, um, but we will. Um, how do we get H? Uh, well, H, if we needed to find it, we can find it straight out of the superheated tables. Um, Subcooled liquid, we don't have a table for. So uh, here's what we do. We're going to the saturated tables, but we want to make sure we're going to the temperature tables. The, the reason why temperature is that if we think about liquids, liquids have a unique property to them uh, for water, which is that it's essentially incompressible. So the molecules are so tightly packed together that if we try to put them under pressure, um, they can only squeeze a tiny bit. So there's not a lot of expandability. Compare that to vapor where there's lots of space from molecule to molecule. They can be compressed or expanded. So pressure doesn't affect things like volume if it's incompressible. It also doesn't really affect other thermodynamic properties. Enthalpy is the one that we're looking for. Again, we're going to show the relationship as to why enthalpy is important in the next uh, video. But here's where we find enthalpy. Enthalpy, so we're going to find enthalpy of the liquid at whatever given temperature I'm at. So irregardless of what pressure I'm sitting, as long as I know I'm in the liquid region, I'm going to use HF at T. Uh, this is a bit of a stretch. There's a, a bit more, um, uh, I guess, better equation that's a little more complicated to find enthalpy. Um, I use this one because that's what your power engineering textbooks uh, follow. So um, when we get into later on in our careers uh, in courses, um, we'll probably expand that to be a little more complicated equation for finding your, your enthalpy of a subcooled liquid. So as an example, if I was asked to find the enthalpy of 40 degree liquid water, uh, what I would do is I would go first of all to my temperature tables, find 40 degrees, and then my properties would be my HF. So 167.57 would be my enthalpy of subcooled liquid water at 40 degrees.